us. So we can continue to just point to God when credit is due, right? right. And we can say, God, it was, it's impossible for me to have survived this, let alone to be thriving in life. We have to point to him in those situations to say, God, this is bigger than I am. This is supernatural. Uh, we were in a, a small group the Monday night, and uh, you know, I was just explaining to the group how we spend our time with God, and it was powerful. We were just being vulnerable with each other and saying, well, what's that look like? And one of the people in the group is pretty unchurched. You know, They've only been around the things of God for about a year, and they were just confused and saying, well, what do you do? You know, I've heard people talk about quiet time or devotions, and uh, it was so funny. I, I went over to my bookshelf and kind of blew the dust off of a devotional book and opened it to September 16th. And the top of the page said, praying to God in private in your prayer closet. And I was like, well, you can't make that stuff up. <laughs> like, that's awesome, right? And then immediately to know, like, this isn't about me just leading a group. God's here. God's here. And I couldn't have made that up if I would have tried to figure out the day of the calendar and pull the book. And it's awesome. God makes us look good. When we're out there on the edge, when we're stepping out in faith, and we're stepping into those roles and those things that he's called us into, he makes us look good. We're like, wow, that's awesome. Right, guys, see how it says. We get together with God. What's this Matthew something in the scripture there? He's, he's doing those things all the time. And it's awesome that each one of you is aware of that voice and him speaking to you and your thoughts and your mind, giving you those connections. And, and it really, it's imp impactful to the people around us where I just stopped and I said, God, you know, you know that I couldn't have done that. And I turned to the other people and I said, guys, I, I didn't make this up. You know, this is, this is God moving amongst us just to make a point. And maybe it wasn't hugely impactful, but the impactful part was he's here. Right. He's here. He's speaking. And each one of us is hearing him in the little things and in the big things, right? So I love that picture that, you know, it's not, it's not all about us. It doesn't have to be. And, and if you're feeling a sense of hopelessness, if you're feeling a sense of fear, you know, of a, of a work responsibility, of a role that you've stepped into in life, you know, a relationship where you're out of your depth. You know, I uh, was sitting across the table from a gentleman that was diagnosed with schizophrenia in my home and just in my mind saying, Lord, I want to love this man, but I'm out of my depth. I'm not equipped in my own self to minister the love of God in this situation. I can't do that out of my head, you know, and you kind of want to run and just say, oh, uh, listen, I forgot and left the stove on at my friend's house and I, I need to check on something and for God to go, no, I want you to sit and minister. This man needs my love just as much as the people that are fun to be around, the people where you can cut up and laugh with. This guy couldn't make eye contact, and there was, he was wrestling with something internally because it wasn't good, you know, the look in his eyes. And just to realize that as we follow God, it winds up looking a lot like Jesus, because Jesus had guys that were in chains in the tombs, cutting themselves with stones, running up to him and saying, you've got my answer. Yeah. And we need to be mindful that we are disciples of Jesus, and there's people that are cut up they're in chains. They're in bondage. It might not look like this gentleman did in my home, but we have people approaching us that are desperate. Yeah. They're desperate for us yeah. to be equipped yeah. to step out and minister to them. They're hungry. Yeah. They're thirsty. That's what Jesus told the people that he ministered to. He said, if you're thirsty, come drink from me because you've been drinking from the sewer of the world and it's making you sick. But I've got living water that's pure, that's clean, that's bringing you everlasting life. We are offering that cold drink of water to people that are thirsty and dying in the desert of life. And I'd encourage you today not to be fearful and back down from people that are approaching you with things that are a little overwhelming, Amen. with situations where you just go, ah, uh, Ah, uh, let me get back to you. We can just immediately in our hearts and our minds say, Jesus, help me to love this person. 
Show me what this looks like. Where are, the, where are good boundaries in this situation? How can I reach out and extend kindness and your grace to this person who's not getting this from other sources? You know, And it's so awesome that you know, we, we have that in us. We've got that wellspring of strength and life right in us. And we can just tap into that at any time and release that into the life of somebody sitting across the table, right? We can release that life into them. And it's not about us. We're just, we're just yielding. We're just opening that faucet right. so it'll spill out into their lives and impact them, right? And don't minimize the effect that that has of grabbing coffee with someone or a kind word to someone. Don't minimize what God can do through that, look at that lady that sat down at the well. And Jesus spoke a word over her, and that radically transformed her life to where she ran back to her village and started telling everyone she knew. Don't minimize those opportunities when Holy Spirit prompts you to shake someone's hand, to approach someone that's standing off to the side that looks like maybe they're not plugged in and they're not connected. Don't minimize that. God can do a lot with a very small amount. And he can multiply what you're sharing with someone and impact them in a powerful way for the kingdom of God. Um, you know, I really think that God gave me this picture, you know, as I was sharing with some people. Even our testimony of what we've been through in the past, some of us aren't real proud of where we've been. I know there's situations I've been in that didn't look like Jesus. That didn't look like the outcome that I would have wanted. I wasn't making the choices that were honoring to him. But your testimony is like a key. And God will use that to unlock the prison cell of someone that's condemned and locked up in the exact same situation that God set you free of. And we need to be bold about sharing our testimony in the light of the gospel, in the light of the new covenant, of saying, this is what happened in my life, you know? And something like a divorce or something where you go, that was not God's will. That is not something I want to bring a lot of attention to, but I want to be able to release over someone else, hey, that doesn't have to be the way it goes for you. Speak life over that situation. Speak life over your spouse. Speak life into what the devil's attacking. And we can take our testimony of our failure that God turned around and unlock someone's prison cell and do exactly what Jesus called us to do, to set the prisoners free by simply sharing our testimony. And then you don't have to be a teacher or an eloquent speaker. You can, every one of us, I could sit down with each one of you and say, man, tell me your story. And it would flow out of us so easily because it's our story. We know our story and we know the black that was turned to white. We know that sadness and that sorrow that God turned to joy. And you know what it does? Every time we share that testimony and we, we, in our ill-equipped, weak minds, uh, in our weak flesh, we share that testimony and it revives us. It refreshes us because we're reminding ourselves, God, you walked me out of that life and death situation. You walked me out of chaos and confusion. You walked me out of that, planted my feet underneath me, and set me on my way to victory. And it refreshes us. And we get excited. And not only are you speaking life and freedom over that other person, but you're renewing your mind. You're reminding yourself. You're remembering the good things that God has done for you. So be bold in sharing your story, in sharing your testimony, Be confident in the fact that God can use that to bring life to someone's situation. And it really helps us, you know, not to get too caught up with ourselves. Um, You know, it, it talks about how God didn't call the wise in the natural. He didn't call the mighty. He didn't call us because we were the top of our class. You know, he said, I'm calling you out in such a way that it's going to be undoubtedly me. It'll be just so obvious that my work, that something supernatural is happening, 
that I'll get credit. I'll get glory, and I'll be able to move in that situation. Um, I love in Psalms 103, where it just talks about how God knows us. If we look at Psalm 103, 14, it just speaks to this. It says in Psalm 103, 14, For He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. You know, He, he created us from scratch. He knows what we're made out of. And he knows our weakness. He knows he can sympathize with us when we hit that wall in life. And we say, God, I, I can't go forward through this. And he says, I know. I built you. I know. I made you. I fashioned you in your mother's womb. I know. I chose you for this position on my team at this place at this time. I know. I chose you. I know your history, John. He knows each one of your past. He knows your darkest moments and your darkest thoughts. And he says, I know, because I'm the one that shed light. I'm the one that poured light into you. I know your frame. I get it. And all we ever have to do is instead of me getting in pride and either stepping away from an opportunity and saying, God, I, would, I can't do this without you, so I'll quit. Because sometimes we can do that. We can be a little foolish in our thinking and think, well, God, this has gotten super heavy. I'm going to just drop it. And it's probably not going to be good. Whatever's in the box, you know, pink. And God's like, no, 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 don't, don't do that. You know, rely on me to help you carry what I've given you. Rely on me to flow through you, just like I'm doing this morning. You know, I could have talked to Pastor Byron Rhea saying, you know, I don't feel equipped to share. I don't feel equipped to minister God's word. And I know good and well that every time he offers us an opportunity to share, whether it's in this setting or whether it's one-on-one -on -one over coffee or in our living room, he's all the time reminding us, don't just drop it and back up and cancel. Rely on me. And don't become prideful thinking, well, I'll show them what I know. This will be fantastic. <laughs> you know, I know what it looks like if I'm talking out of my head, and it's not helping anybody usually, you know. I mean, I might get a good laugh, but it's not going to transform their life for sure. But his word in our hands and in our hearts, as we're yeah. fellowshipping with him, as we're walking down the road of life and saying, Jesus, thank you that you chose me. Thank you. And we can start thanking him down the line, and you know, so many times in my life, Thanksgiving is like walking into a really dark room and flipping a light switch on and shedding light on, my goodness, what a great God we have. My goodness, let me sit and remember all these situations that I can't even count. And it's literally like, you know, what it talks about in Philippians 4, you know, when we feel like we're not equipped, when we feel like we're not up to the task, many times thanksgiving and remembering the goodness of God, remembering what he's brought us through, that activates, it sheds light. It, it, it encourages our own hearts to step into this new thing, to sit across the table from someone that's very troubled and can't keep eye contact and to say, okay, God, you, you can flow through me just like you did here. You can flow through me and give me the words to say. You can love this person through me just like you have time and again. And it talks about this in, uh, with Thanksgiving. It talks about this in Philippians 4, 4, where it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And he repeats it in case we miss it. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness your kindness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And it says, be anxious for nothing. So I don't ever need to be anxious when I've stepped into a new role and done the like, what did I just get myself into type thought process. He says, don't be anxious about that. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known to God. So we can rely on thanksgiving even as a tool that we have when we feel overwhelmed, 
When, when the thoughts are coming that I'm ill-equipped, that I'm not up to this task that's been presented for me, I want to drop this heavy box that I can't carry in my own strength. We can remind ourselves and start to become thankful of what God has done for us and just say, God, you've done this. You've done this. You've led me through this. You've allowed me to experience this. You've flowed through the, me in this way. This is no different. This current situation is no different. He's the same God. Um, and he even reminds us, you know, we can be thankful, but, um, you know, he talks about it, that the fact that we are equipped even to minister to others. When we look at 2 Timothy 3, and he reminds us of this, 2 Timothy 3, and we'll start in 16. So this ill-equipped feeling, this sense that I'm not up to the task and reminding ourselves to be thankful and remember what he's walked us out of in our past. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine or teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So this word that we hold in our hands it's instructing us of how we're in right standing with God. And, and that right thinking that it's not about me. It's about the one that chose me to be part of his family. Next verse, it says that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped. It's right there for every good work. You are thoroughly equipped to face Monday morning. You're thoroughly equipped to sit across from a coworker or a family member that's not operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that's manifesting something other than Jesus into a situation where there's anger, where there's strife, where there's pain, where there's confusion. You're thoroughly equipped in the Word of God is a resource that we use to remind us of who we are, that we are children of light. And just like Thanksgiving switches that light on, we've got light in us. And when it gets dark in the conversation, in the room, we have that light we can release out of us. We are the light. And we can just take the cap off of that and shine. And the darkness has to flee. The enemy has to submit. It's got to be that way because we're yielded to God and he doesn't have a choice. He's under our feet. He's defeated, but he's trying to lie to you and I to say you're ill-equipped. You don't have what it takes. You can't keep moving forward like this. You're going to have to quit to some degree. Or you're going to have to get prideful. Maybe you need to do something. Be faster. Be quicker. Be smarter. Play harder. You know, he can, he can run us into either ditch very quickly. Of just quit and run or do it yourself. Quick. Show up to practice early. Work harder. Work harder. Do more stuff. Maybe that'll work. You know, and we don't want to fall into either of those camps. We want to rest in God. And rest in his word to say, no, wait a minute, that's not the case. Jesus chose me, and he's really good at picking teams. We're 2,000 years later seeing the impact of those disciples that he picked for his team. You're no different. You're part of that process. Why do you think he keeps working for 100 years and 100 years and 1,000 years and 1,000 years? Because Jesus set into motion people he chose that in the natural were ill-equipped. And he equipped them by the power of his word, by the power of his love. And it's all the time his love we can go back to. Say, God, I don't want to love this person. <laughs> they don't, they're not acting lovable. And he says, well, that's okay. There's a love inside of you that won't turn anyone away people that were spitting in his face and pulling his beard, slapping him, mocking him, all undeserved. 
and he loved them. He loved them, and he said, no, I've been equipped to love these people. I've been thoroughly equipped to take hatred and vile menace and reply in love. And each one of us are equipped to respond in love, to respond just like Jesus did and said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And we're not being nailed to a cross physically. We're not being beaten. We're not bleeding physically in what we're suffering most times. But we have inside of us, we have a Jesus, our Jesus, who replied with forgiveness. When he was wrongfully accused, wrongfully beaten, wrongfully attacked, His response was forgiveness. Lord, don't hold this to their account. So even with forgiveness, you are thoroughly equipped to release the love of God and to let people go. And to say, I'm not going to swallow this bitter poison of unforgiveness and keep it in my system. I'm going to spit it out. I'm going to spit out the poison, this bitterness and not let it get into my belly. And I'm going to say, you know what? I forgive you. And then we're, when we're in the wrong, I just all the time want to get faster to say, you know, if I played some part and I failed you in some way, then I apologize. And being quicker as children of God to just take our part and say, look, if I've done something to offend, I'm sorry. I don't want to lead life that way. And so it's so awesome That instead of hiding our fears, our pain, our feelings of being ill-equipped, instead of covering it up like a child that's scraped their knee and they won't show their mother, we can just expose that to God in our time with him and say, God, I've scraped my knee. I have a fear. I have something from my past. I have a hurt in my heart. And let him minister healing. Let him minister comfort to those areas of our life that look a little scraped up. They're, they sting a little bit still. Don't hide those things from the very one that can bring healing to that area. So I would just encourage you today that when you feel ill-equipped, when you feel like you're about to lose it, if this person says one more thing, it's going to make me react in a way that's not going to be Jesus. When you're in those moments where you say, if that stupid noise goes off in my car one more time, and we can stop and say, wait a minute. No, we're playing for an eternal game here. I am thoroughly equipped to manifest the fruits of the Spirit. I am thoroughly equipped to maintain peace in the midst of whatever it is. Whether it's sitting in traffic or sitting across from someone that's coming at you with teeth and everything else bared. And just say, thank you, Lord, that I'm thoroughly equipped. Thank you that you chose me to be sitting here. Because if you'd have chosen somebody else that didn't know you, this would be a mess. Thank you, God, that you planted me into this person's life, into this situation, so that I can demonstrate the love of God. And so we're thoroughly equipped. As you go out into this week, as you think through some of the things in life where you feel like you're lacking and you feel like you're coming up short, remember this. You're thoroughly equipped. He chose you to be his friend to represent him. And he's trusting the Christ in you. He's trusting the spirit in you that when push comes to shove, when you get squeezed, that Jesus will come out and minister love and minister your testimony and start sharing how thankful you are because every one of us have come out of things. And we're all experiencing some degree of freedom of knowing where we came from. And every time on my worst day, I can wake up the next morning and say, God, thank goodness you're here. (laughs) 
I'm not too sure about anything else or what I've just agreed to or what just happened, but praise God, you're good. And you're going to keep helping me walk this out. Amen. So, Father, I thank you that you've thoroughly equipped each one of us here. I thank you for filling each one with your love and a fresh revelation of the steadfast love you have for them. I thank you for stirring up a thankful heart. I thank you for helping us to walk in forgiveness, releasing those around us who have wronged us. Thank you that we are sensitive to your voice, Holy Spirit. And we're all the time listening and yielding, and we have the courage to react and respond to what you're prompting us to. I thank you that we're thoroughly equipped for this kingdom work, that you chose us for your team, and that we're so excited to be on a winning team. (laughs) We're so excited to be on the victorious team as children of light. And I bless each one here, Father. I bless their homes. I bless their finances. I bless their physical bodies. I bless their relationships, that as they go from here, they will know that they are blessed. They're children of Abraham, living in abundance, lacking nothing, thoroughly equipped. We thank you, Father, for your steadfast love that you never quit on us. In Jesus' name, amen.